wait for a few minutes to, for people to log in. So we've got quite a few coming in. So nice. Give people a few minutes to join in. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll start off, I think. Um, we've got a, quite a few people joined already. So just wanted to say good morning for everybody and very glad that you could join us for the first of our Coping with COVID presentations, which uh, we've organised with all of the Northern Sydney Councils have, have sorted this one out with the Resilience Centre in Epping. So this morning, Michelle Wooten from the Resilience Centre will be giving us lots of useful tips and hints on staying afloat and staying connected during these difficult COVID restrictions, which I'm sure people, have, everyone is finding a little bit interminable at the moment. Michelle's a warm and dedicated registered psychologist with 10 years experience working with adolescents, adults and families in a variety of mental health settings. She's obtained additional postgraduate studies in applied psychology and is currently completing specialist training through a Master of Clinical Psychology program. So she should be a wonderful um, resource for us. If you can think of a question that you'd like to ask during the presentation, click on the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and then type your question into the little pop-up box and we'll pass these questions on to Michelle and she'll respond at some, at some points during the presentation, but mostly towards the end of the presentation. So, yeah, so I think we're, are we good to go? So, good. Okay, yeah. over to you, Michelle. Thanks. Thanks, Robin. See you soon. Okay. Okay, I'm pretty sure that everyone can see that screen okay. I'm just gonna move myself out of the way. There we go. Um, thanks for the intro, Robin. So, and thanks for having me here as well. It's always, such a delight to um, share knowledge with our community as you guys do uh, with us as well during these presentations. Um, so let's get started. Uh, speaking from the Resilience Centre in Epping, uh, I'd like to acknowledge that we are here today on the land of the Darug people and the Darug people are the traditional owners of this land in Epping. So what I want to do is start from like the bottom and just work our way up. So we need to look at the brutal facts of what we're actually dealing with with COVID-19 and that the older people are more at risk and that you have to stay at home. So that's that's a reality of why we're here really. Young people can spread the virus um, and so you can't see your grandkids or your kids and that older people are recommended to isolate even more. So you can't see your friends or engage in your usual activities. So you really are quite an isolated bunch um, of Northern Sydney. Um, I, I think that shopping for groceries is an ever-changing event. Um, whether there'll be toilet paper, <laughs> uh, like what is click and collect? Is it just me? Or like there's so many acronyms that um, I'm still learning. Like I didn't even know what a QR code was. And now they're just everywhere. Um, so you're not alone. Um, things change quite rapidly as well while you're isolated and trying to work yourself through it. But there is certainly hope because um, that's basically as bad as it can get. So we can only get better from here. You guys have um, come up with um, some really good questions. So we popped them into the two segments that we're doing. So staying afloat and then staying connected. So in the staying afloat section, we're looking at what you can control. Um, we're looking at routine, um, but also how it's, you can still get bored and lonely amongst that. So we're gonna think about ways to be able to keep you stimulated and um, still engaged. And then how to help yourself get through lockdown with individual ideas. Um, in staying connected, what are the types of ways to stay connected? And, and you guys were really interested in that. And how do you connect with someone that doesn't have a computer? That one came up a lot as well. And how do you see your family when you're so disconnected from them? But also what can wait? Because this time is short. It feels like we're in it forever. 
um, but thankfully um, it is time limited as it was last time. So what can we control? We uh, only have so much time and energy in the day. And so if we use it wisely, um, it can feel like we've got more control, even though the situation really hasn't changed. So it's about what we pay attention to. So with this one, you've got what isn't inside of your control is in the square on the outside. And so things you can't control is the amount of toilet paper you'll find at the store. <laughs> um, we can't control how long this is going to last. Um, and also we can't control the actions of others and how, how they, you know, um, follow the rules of social distancing. So if we focus on these things, um, then we end up trying to be, you know, quite, quite depressed and quite anxious because there's nothing we can do. Um, but what we can control is what's inside the yellow circle. Um, so things like your positive attitude, finding fun things for yourself to do in the day. I actually quite like this. Um, everyone has kindness and we, there's much that we can give to others. And so if we focus on that, we not only help ourselves, but we help others. This one, someone reminded me of it the other day, like if we just focus on like the basics of what we need to know about COVID, such as the 11 a.m. Um, updates from Gladys, then, and, and I guess the, the health advice, if it's changed or the, um, the number of sites, exposure sites, it's changed. Once we've got that part down for the day, anything outside of that that we pay attention to in the news is actually just opinion. And it just goes over and over the things that we can't control. So really think to yourselves about how much do I need to know? Um, because it's going to take away from the things that you can control, such as fun things and connecting with people that you care about. Another way of seeing what you're in control of is an, is an old phrase that you're probably really familiar with. It's the serenity prayer. And it just reminds us of what we can control. So I'm just going to read it out to you. And you you never know, you might want to read it to yourself right now as well. And so it says, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. It's basic, but it's powerful. And I think the hard part for me is just accepting that we cannot change things. I think that's really hard because that comes, I guess, a lot of anxiety. But if we accept it, then, and we, we can't change it anyway if we do worry about it, then we can focus on the things that we can change. The wisdom, oh my gosh, like, like sometimes I oscillate between, yes, I know what I can control, I know what I need to focus on, and then to just ruminating for hours about numbers and whether I've done the right thing for my family, et cetera. So you're, you're not alone <laughs> if you lose perspective. Now I'm gonna get heavy with this slide just for a couple of minutes, but this, this is really important because it leads us into the rest of the, basically the rest of the um, webinar around what you can control. So if it's possible, could you just take a photo of the worry tree, just here? And if you've got a pen and paper or a spreadsheet open, just to take notes, because um, a lot of people like to come back to this. It's basic, but it, it gives you, I guess, um, a roadmap of how to get you through. But like me, um, after about you know, a day, I've forgotten 90% of everything I've learned the day before. So um, I need uh, memory aids. <laughs> so how can this help? Well, we're gonna start at the top and work our way down. First of all, we need to know that we're worried about something. We need to actually tune in that we can feel it in our tummies or our heart is racing or our hands are shaking or we're feeling foggy um, or we're feeling sick in the stomach. That, that tells you that, or you're worrying about something over and over. That tells you that there's something that you're worried about that you need to deal with because that's the point. The worry comes and keeps knocking you in the head <laughs> until you see it. And then, because it wants you to work out, you know, how to make it feel better. So this is what it's about. This tree will help you work out what that worry is, 
and then how to work your way down so you feel better. So the first thing we do is, what, what am I worried about? And so sit there and think, really, you might even want to jot it down on paper because when we write things down, it means that we're, we can think about things um, slowly. And so we might be worried about, you know, when's this lockdown going to end? And then we say to ourselves, okay, well, is this a hypothetical situation? Is it something that I can control or is it outside something that I can't control? Because if it is, there's nothing you can do about it. We, we do need to just recognise that it's something we can't control. Try and just let the worry go. I know it's easier um, said than done, but it, it, it's to let the worry go, know that you can't do anything about it, and then change your focus of attention. So what that means is to engage in something that you do enjoy, which is what we're going to talk about. But because these things are things you can change, just in here. So if it's a hypothetical situation, that's what we do. We can't change it. Um, it's just, we just need to let that one go. But if you do say to yourself, yeah, this is something that uh, I can do something about, and it might be um, that you're feeling isolated and you miss your family, that is something that you can do. It is a current problem. So we go down this side. So as you can see here, the next thing to do is we look at an action plan and say, okay, I miss my family, I feel lonely, I miss my friends, what am I going to do about it? Uh, when am I going to do it and how? So it might be that uh, maybe you normally say go to church on a Sunday and, and that's going to prompt you to get in touch with people um, from church that you know and you're going to do it by telephone or um, arrange a Zoom meeting or something and then so that's how you're going to do it. If we weren't talking now, you'd be able to do it right now. And you do it and then you let the worry go that you're feeling lonely, that you're never going to talk to people again because you're doing it. Um, and then you change your focus of attention, which is going back to things that you can control, activities that you like. But if you can't do it now and you can do it later, then you schedule it in and we're going to look at that. You schedule it in and say, it's Monday today. I can't talk to those friends until Sunday because I know that's when they're available. I'm available. I'm going to schedule it in going to schedule it for 10 o'clock, put an alarm on, and when that alarm goes off, I know that I'm going to be talking to those people. Then you let the worry go because you've got it sorted. Then change your focus of attention back to the things you can control. Now, worries are predictable and they come back again. <laughs> if it's the same worry, you just let it know that you've got it sorted. It's either a hypothetical and it's learning to let that worry go. And these are the ones that come back over and over. But eventually, the more you do this, the more it kind of those worries kind of stop knocking you in the head. But if it is a current problem, then you do your action plan and you redo it and you do it for many different things. And then you follow the steps. OK, that was heavy. That's as heavy as it gets. But please think about that later because it is a really, really good tool. But Acknowledging that was probably, you know, quite heavy. Has anybody got any thoughts or comments about how far we've gotten so far? I'll just wait another 10 seconds, Michelle, to see if anybody yeah. is typing anything. Oh, yes, we have thumbs up. It's great. Thank you, everyone. That's good. I'm glad. <laughs> Happy people, Michelle. Thank you. We like happy people. <laughs> Keep going, Belinda, you right? Keep going, thank you. All right, okay. Thanks for getting through that with me. Um, now we're gonna look at how to stay afloat through a daily schedule. Um, so now, I guess now that we know that we're focusing on things that we can change then and things that we can control, um, that will help us actually to improve our experience and help us feel, you know, a sense of well-being. And we we often kind of want to start at the fun stuff, but it actually is worth going back to the boring basics. So this this um, picture helps us to understand how to do that. Um, it, it is about having the most productive day ever. Uh, I'm not sure that <laughs> that's what exactly what we're aiming for here, and it's not for me. It sounds too stressful. Um, but the ideas on here um, give us a start of uh, what to put on our daily schedule. So the basics are try and wake up at the same time every day. 
maybe 6.30 is a bit early for you. Um, maybe nine o'clock is, is how you function better. Um, but then also trying to go to bed at about the same time as well. So keeping, keeping those um, either end. We wanna try and then put in our breakfast, lunch and dinner, uh, making sure that we're eating regularly throughout the day and keeping those blood sugars um, at a nice level and also spending time for ourselves just to be, be with us, be with ourselves, relax. Um, and then the in opposite is actually make sure we're getting regular exercise. In between that, then you can just put in the fun things like um, tackling your to-do list, uh, spending time on the internet or with friends, doing fun things, and also making sure that we're looking after our hygiene too. Um, the, the funny part that um, someone raised the other day was um, they said, oh, good, happy hour. I can do that for an hour and a half. Um, <laughs> maybe not every day and maybe for not that length of time. But um, if, you, if you feel relaxing with, with a beer or, 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 um, or wine or something, you know, a couple of nights a week, that, that's okay. But let's uh, not get too excessive about it. Um, the, the important part is that we're trying to focus on the basics to give us like a foundation, I suppose. And then we build from there. So I like to think about our days as is cutting it up into bite-sized chunks. Otherwise, the day can actually be um, quite heavy and quite long. Some of you might remember this um, from the, the time where if you've got children when you brought them home as newborns and it, the days just dragged on and on without having anything to break it up. And so we want to look at what can you fit into the hours of the day. So you might want to obviously start with waking up around six, seven or nine or whatever. You want to schedule in your meals, lunch, dinner, afternoon tea if you want, your activities. Some people like to exercise early morning when they've got the morning sun on, on their face and gets them up and alert. And then some people might um, prefer kind of um, afternoon. Try not to do anything too rigorous in the evenings because it'll just uh, you know wake you back up again. Uh, but there's you know nothing wrong with a nice gentle walk in at night, um, see the stars, uh, and also putting in times where you're taking medications, and then in times you've got um, still any blocks that you've got left over, then you can put in um, I guess put in time to be able to attend to the goals that you've set for the day. The goals can be really similar. It can be things which we'll talk about later, like um, reading your book, connecting with people, um, doing some gardening. Uh, but to try and be specific with the goals though. So I want to plant X number of, you know, plants today. Um, I want to, you know, catch up with this particular person at this time. So make the goals specific. And then in your to-do list, it's, um, I guess, listing the things to do here that help you to achieve your goals. So, you know, it could be setting that timer to see your friend. It could be, um, getting everything out ready to plant those plants when you're going to do that in the afternoon. And then all then washing, washing your clothes, you know, changing the bed linen. And then you tick them off when you've done them. And then it helps you to feel productive, like you've used the day efficiently. And then also it's less likely that the day is going to get it away from you. And you're less likely to end up at the end of the day kind of going, well, that was long. That was unproductive. Um, I feel like I'm, I'm failing at this. So just take one step at a time. My favourite part personally is a little meal plan section. Um, I've started meal planning again and I can't believe that I've forgotten about it for like four years and I've remembered again <laughs> and I'm loving it. Um, I look forward to whatever it is that I've got um, planned for the evening. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about it. Um, it's all there. I've already planned on uh, I've already done the meal plan before that. So I've um, added the um, ingredients to my list um, that I need to buy for that week. And it, um, so that it's all ready to go. But, but not just that though, it can help you also limit your time in the shops because you've got what you need, milk, bread, eggs, um, whatever else is on there. And then you can go in that and be purposeful going up and down the aisles. You don't need to you know, hang around, you know what you're getting. Um, so it helps you get out faster. Um, and also, if you want and um, you're more tech savvy or someone can help you with that, you can also get a click and collect order where you can 
um, someone from like Woolworths or Coles, or I don't know about Coles do it, but Woolworths definitely do it, where they can uh, meet you outside and they put it in your boot, um, the groceries in the boot, so you don't even have to go inside. And, or you can get it delivered for a fee, an extra fee as well. Um, so I guess the idea is just to, to use the day um, to, to the best that you can so that you feel like you've got control of the day and it doesn't have control of you. And I don't know whether this is interesting for anyone else, but today I just realised that there's actually like a water intake thing here and you can actually keep track of how much water you're drinking too. So um, if that's of interest to anyone. Okay. There is benefit to also looking at the bite-sized chunks um, of your day through a calendar format. I particularly like this because uh, we can see what's going on in the week. Uh, and so we can plan for things that are coming up. Um, we can do it on a weekly calendar or even on a, on a monthly calendar. Um, although it is better to try and do what we call staying in the here and now, which is we can only change this moment in time. Um, you're using this time really efficiently. You're here, you're trying to learn ways to be able to look after yourself and look after your families and your partners, then that's the best way. The best way is to try and just be present in the here and now. If we do look too far into the future, we do start to worry a lot. And often it's about things we can't control. So try and stay in the here and now. But we also need to plan for the future as well. So if you've got, say, your granddaughter's birthday coming up at like the end of the month, then we also then need to plan for getting, you know, that gift, getting the card and being able to send it in the mail on time so that um, your grandchild gets it. So uh, it is helpful to have um, your daily planner also out on a calendar. Um, the only thing I want to say about the last part about this is that I had a 16 year old um, client on the weekend and she wanted me to share her idea with you and that she wanted to let you know that she finds it um, helpful to find one activity and allocate it to that same day each week. So for example, Monday, you might be wanting to learn calligraphy um, or maybe Thursdays, you, you're focusing on, on a sewing project or even getting a book off that shelf that you've had for 30 years with all those good intentions to read it. <laughs> now, now's your time. But what she's trying to say is pick a day of the week that you're gonna do that and do that every week on that day. And so that eventually um, throughout the lockdown, lockdown period, you can see how much progress you've made. But um, also it means that, um, that on Mondays, you know what you're doing and it's the same thing. And it actually helps you to work out what day of the week it is. Um, I don't know if anybody else is experiencing this, but I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> um, it is helpful because, you know, um, school age children go to school Monday to Friday, so I've got that sorted. Um, but, you know, amongst the days, I'm like, is it Wednesday, Thursday? I don't know. Um, but if you don't have a lot of routine, uh, you're retired or um, you can't see people and um, see your family and friends, then it um, may be adding one thing a day that you're going to do um, specific to that day might also help you to um, know what day of the week it is. <laughs> okay, so we have got, I'll just leave you for a minute to have a look at if you can see that the um, most popular um, activities that were done in lockdown in the UK, and there's a list there. So this section is about um, knowing that this is actually a unique time for us. And one of the things I noticed um, at the end of lockdown one last year was that people or families recognised that they were, they actually enjoyed um, the quiet time. They were able to admit that after they had their option to be able to leave the home or not, but they did find it useful to just to focus on the basics. I mean, there were areas of the house that people hadn't been in for ages. You know, who spends time in the dining room really? But um, just going to those rooms, people found joy just to be in that space because they had a puzzle on there or something. And just being in different parts of the house was enjoyable. So let's check this out. 
uh, I mean, it never occurred to me um, to engage in rock painting um, to get me through lockdown, but I'm starting to feel like I've missed out on something because there was an increase in 740% of rock painting during lockdown. And uh, even more, where there was um, a massive uptake of baking. I would love to know if there was anybody out there who was successful at making sourdough bread. <laughs> I'm keen to hear if anyone's had a success story, if, there, if there's somebody out there. I'm waiting to see what's coming through. Come on, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> Any failures? Like you tried heaps of times, but it just wasn't your thing. Mm. And while we're waiting for answers, we have a comment from a, pan from a participant before saying they were going through their pantry and using up things that would usually linger in the back of the cupboard past their use by date. And they were finding it very satisfying. Don't we all know that? I love that. That is great. <laughs> I'm going to write that down, actually. Yes. That's a good one. I'm someone who likes to order things. So I'm going to do that and then get into my cupboards. Yes. And actually throw out things I don't need and then reorder it and and reach down the back from the first time ever oh we have a yes. comment so we hear from a participant that yes she was successful after many tries but then she let her starter go off so now she's back to making a new starter oh yep. nice okay <laughs> we have Good another job. one saying her daughter became an expert as a sourdough baker awesome why sourdough, Michelle? Sorry? Why sourdough, do you think? I don't know. I have no idea. It's a, I, does anyone know the answer to that question? Because I've got no idea. I mean, I like the idea. It goes really great with um, pumpkin soup. Yes, sure does. Uh, then we have, yes, it's easy. Oh, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Well, that's, that's good to hear that there's been successes. And if it's not your thing, that's okay. Um, there's always rock painting in the background. Um, and sorry to those who actually rock paint. I'm sure they look awesome. I think it's just uh, my sensitivity because I know I'm really bad at art. Um, so it makes me feel better. <laughs> but there's heaps of things. There's, um, there's, you know, doing a jigsaw, getting out in the garden. Um, I love playing bingo, but I'm too slow at it. But, you know, yoga is a great one. Um, to get you, you know, your mind centered and, you know, stretching and um, looking after your body. And Aldi just had a yoga sale. So maybe there's some things there you might be able to pick mm -hmm. up. A couple more comments, Michelle. Yep. One says, I have continued to make bread using my own wholemeal grain and seed mix. And that's lovely, the, the activities that have continued past lockdown. Yeah. Another says, going through documents for what needs throwing out and doing some shredding every day of documents with personal data. I like that. So kind of um, like doing a clean out in many, many different ways, getting to things that you might not do because there's so many opportunities outside of the home. Yes, That's really yes. great. Absolutely. And there's something good. There's a great feeling about letting go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And lots there's of, well, yep. Yeah. Many more coming through. <laughs> I love it. I've chosen to make cakes, a new talent discovered. Somebody else has a daily game of Yahtzee with friends on Zoom. Oh, wow. I like that. And then somebody sharing a wholemeal recipe with seeds and soda bread. Thank you. That's only come through to the panellists, so we'll have to make that one public. Oh, nice. Somebody else is making photo albums and another is turning on music and dancing around like a maniac. <laughs> That's got to be my favourite. I love it. Me too. That's great. <laughs> I like that because it actually gets out all that, like that pent up energy that you've got inside that you just got to get out somewhere, all that frustration. Yes. I like it. I like it a lot. <laughs> let Over us time. know what, let us know in the chat <laughs> what songs. <laughs> Thanks for that, guys. The next part um, is about building mastery. So what is that? So building mastery is about gain, engaging in an activity regularly where over time you see the improvements. And so a lot of times we can't control, obviously, what's going on. But, but if we feel like we're um, making progress in something, even if it's just um, a leisure activity that you're doing inside, then that can actually make us feel a bit better. 
uh, and obviously more positive as well. So this is an idea, I quite like it, it's cute. Um, it's, this is an idea about, obviously this person likes to do golf outside of the home. Uh, and so they've developed a way to work on their putting skills. And also, um, I guess th there's options here where they, if they get into the middle hole, it's worth 50 points um, because it's more narrow versus, you know, this one over here, which is only worth 10 points because it's, it's bigger. So the idea is to adjust what you normally do outside of the home and try and see if you can do that inside because it's something that's given you joy in the past, which means that it's more likely to give you joy now. The other idea as well is to, if you've got a, a golfing buddy, for example, um, then they could actually make one of these on their end too. And then you could share your experiences together or even have like a playoff as well. Um, so I thought that would be fun. Other, other ways you could build mastery or other ideas just to get you building moments of joy. And these are just in three sections. Um, I've, I've, these, these ones down here, I wanted to use a slide because it's really quite helpful, um, but there's ones underneath the temporarily, sorry, temporarily unavailable um, sections that we couldn't engage in because it's, if you're outside social distancing, which we're not allowed to do anymore. So uh, they will become available in the near future. But at the moment, um, you can focus on arts and crafts to so get creative at home. I love the idea of an upcycling project. And I'm sure there's probably um, people on, on the chat today who've, who've managed to be able to, to do well at that or even halfway through a project now. Um, there are art classes you can do online as well, um, or even just with your friends online. Uh, being in nature is an, actually another uh, activity that we get people to do if they're feeling depressed, because being out in nature and the calmness of it um, and just being in, yeah, being in, in the weather, in nature, when it's not hailing or a thunderstorm, um, can actually help us feel um, a lot more calm and at peace. I know it sounds, you know, like whatever, but it's actually true. <laughs> it works. So get outside in the garden. Um, have a little project that you engage in. It doesn't have to be massive. Um, and, and it can be simple things like growing something um, from, um, from a cutting that you found um, on your walk around the block bringing it back, um, putting putting together something like a, a posy and then um, giving it to somebody in your neighbourhood. Uh, we've already had a great example from this one, um, dancing around like a maniac, there, which is awesome. Uh, other ideas, uh, maybe get back to those classics that you used to love. Um, you could play Guess That Song uh, with friends online or family, do a sing-along, and uh, this one's learning to play an instrument, which will need more time, but is a great building mastery activity because you can do it maybe the same day of the week, each week, and see that you're, you're building um, you're, and getting achievement in that one. With Tai Chi, I mean, we have to get out and exercise, but, and particularly about 20 minutes a day, three times a week is like the minimum and what we also use to treat, um, you know, mild depression as well. And of course, the more times you could do that 20 minutes um, of those three days a week, the more you can do that, the more increases the benefits as well. Um, but there's an abundance of research um, that shows that uh, regular um, exercise, particularly Tai Chi, um, can boost your mood and provide that sense of well-being just like getting out of the house away from the stresses um, can make a big difference even if it's only temporary it's a temporary enjoyment that you can rely on and that's what counts um, so for older Australians with Tai Chi it actually helps to reduce the risk of falls um, so if you can do this regularly uh, you can build more flexibility more muscle strength and it helps with your um, coordinate coordination and flexibility. Um, but it's, it's more than just that though. There's, there's all those physical benefits, but it also does relax the mind and helps you to, um, to concentrate and focus better. And you can do that indoors, um, or if you're on the beaches, uh, you can actually do that facing the, facing the water. Um, so I hope there are some people out there who can do that for us that don't live near the water. And um, so you can, you can do that by, um, by the sea, in your garden, 
on your balcony or inside. So staying afloat take home tips. So this is just the end of the first segment. So everyone here today is likely to be in the similar stage of your lives, but we also have various needs and abilities. So take from today what is useful and apply to your life in your own way. And it's easy to lose track of time and the ideas that we have. So remember to schedule in your activities and chores to add structure to your day. And this lockdown will pass, it's only a matter of time. So even when it feels like it'll never end, trust me, you'll be back in Sydney traffic before you know it, just like we did last time. <laughs> and focus on what you do have. Try and stay away from not focusing on what's been taken from you, um, because that will just lead you to places where, that you can't control. And that takes away your positive um, outlook. So focus on what you do have. Easier said than done, I know, but just give it a go. So any final thoughts or comments on staying afloat as we calmly move to our next topic on staying connected? Yes, Michelle, we've got a lot more people sharing um, ideas. I'll just whiz through a few because they're all quite different. Oh, uh, good. So um, somebody talks about in their garden making a veggie patch or continuing to make their veggie patch. And then somebody else who says, okay, for those who live in apartment living, they're getting into potting plants, which is lovely. We're also hearing about Meetup, which is a good website with a diversity of groups. Uh, many of them are generally face-to-face, -face, but they're now connecting online, which is a lovely prelude to start with, so that when they do open up face-to-face, -face, that connection has already been made. Good idea. Uh, and then we have a wonderful, funny one, another one along the lines of dancing, but this one is about singing, discovering YouTube comedy music parody songs. Oh. I know that I they're getting that. me through. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds awesome. That's another good idea as well. Like mm. I'm, I'm feeling inspired by this. I'm going to go online soon and have a look. <laughs> they're great ideas. That they are very, very great ideas, and um, all ones that you can take take into your life too. That's awesome. Good. Thanks, Belinda. Thank you. Do anyone? Maybe I should just wait a minute. If anyone wants to quickly duck off, you might need to go to the bathroom. Um, or you might just want to grab another coffee or tea or just some water. And while we're waiting, we've got one last recommendation. Join U3A to listen to interesting talks on Zoom. Ah, now, I'm like going to put that. my hand up and say I don't know what U3A is. <laughs> yeah, me too. I like it. I'll write that one down as well. If the participant can give a little bit more information, is it is it radio? We'll wait to hear. Okay. Oh, here we go. University of the Third Age. Oh, wow. Still don't know what that is. <laughs> it sounds it sounds like it would be it would really be it'd be interesting. So it sounds like it's about like facts and information. Yes. Yeah. Education. So that sounds good. I'll have I'll have a Google. Oh, lots of people are liking that. We're getting lots of feedback that, that, that it's an excellent source of information, okay. particularly active on the northern beaches. Okay, here we go. It is run by volunteers with guest lecturers. Thank you, oh, participant. Wow. If everybody, if anybody could put a link in and we can share, that would be wonderful. That's great. That's actually really good. I'm, I'm a fan of the BBC World Service. I love their, their podcast series. I'm listening to one at the moment on um, the history of the world. Uh, through 100 objects. So that's uh, the British Museum presents a different object um, of that era and then they talk about that time and uh, from the beginning of civilization up to now. It's really, really interesting. Or not. Either way, don't mind. <laughs> Thank you. It sounds interesting. All right. All right. I'm just, I'll, I'll keep moving ahead then. Thanks, Michelle. Oh, pleasure. Okay, so now we're going to be looking at staying connected. And this is both digitally and in real life. And so I'm sure of you, I'm sure there's many of you who can relate to at least one of these um, photos. So that's staying connected via FaceTime on our phone. Um, it might be through Zoom calls with our uh, family or friends, or it could be via social media. Or your experience could be like these guys down here. <laughs> I love this. So they're talking to their daughter 
um, up there and, and they're obviously arguing about something. I just thought it was hilarious um, because it's it's just a representation of, I'm sure of what, um, you know, is happening in everybody's houses right now. <laughs> So yeah, so basically there are different ways to be able to connect to people online and we're going to look at that now. So those who do well in this period of time have um, a good internet connection uh, as long as your place uh, of area actually has decent internet connection. There's not much you can do about it if, if you're in one of those zones like a black spot zone. Uh, but if you do, uh, a good internet connection works well if you know how to use it too. Um, so get someone to help you out. Uh, if you have up-to-date computers, phones, or tablets, and a tablet, I mean an iPad, are able to use various computer programs for connecting. Uh, so we've heard about um, that Meetup one already. So it's Meetup, um, there's Zoom, Skype, and Google Hangouts is another one. So if it can be up-to-date um, on, on programs that help you to connect. So the more you, um, I guess, the more you use, the more opportunity you've got. But if you only know one or you're learning to know one, that's okay, because I guess it's better than being isolated without having anything at all. If you have, fa uh, have family who are tech savvy with the internet um, and who are willing to teach you um, how to use it as well, that can be helpful. So please reach out um, to your family members uh, because uh, that, that's what they're there for. <laughs> uh, be creative um, and use your time to reach out to others. There is an organisation um, called the Australian Senior Computers Clubs Association, and they offer courses and support to seniors who are trying to upskill their technology skills or just starting. And their website offers um, online courses as well. But obviously before um, lockdown, they actually do run um, face-to-face um, sessions as well. But right now they've jumped back online. And so take a look um, on that website um, and see if there's anything there um, to offer you, or maybe somebody you know who's struggling um, with their computer skills and they might be able to learn something there. There's also a number of ways that we can stay connected with family that we love through um, online. And so here's just some um, comments. You might not be able to read them, but I'm gonna read some out. Um, these are just some ideas um, that some people have come up with. So uh, this one says playing online video games with our grandchildren. Uh, we've set up digital drinks um, with children and um, their grandchildren and their, and their friends. They also reach out to their family and friends overseas or interstate. Uh, this family arranged a, um, a Facebook quiz night. So Friday night drinks and dinner party. Um, not sure how we did it, but it was the granddaughter just called me on Facebook. I answered and everything was fine from there. <laughs> Um, weekly quiz on Zoom with mothers, um, siblings, kids. Uh, I read to my grandchildren on a platform called Marco Polo, which is similar to um, sharing video stories uh, with your grandchildren. You can still, you know, you can still um, read to them at night time uh, through, through these methods. Um, this one says they play chess. Uh, and... We've had several birthdays in the past months, though um, Skype or you know, Zoom has been a valuable way to be able to um, you know, see them open their posted presents that you've sent to them. So that's a few different uh, things you can do. So types of ways to connect, we have addressed some of them, but basically it just highlights what we said before that um, you guys are more isolated um, during COVID than other age groups and that to increase your um, sense of loneliness, to decrease your sense of loneliness is to increase the way, that, the way that you can connect with others because other people are doing it a lot easier. So let's upskill you guys, get you thinking through about how you can do that so we can, you know, close that gap. Plenty of ways to get in touch. Uh, like we've said, you can do video chats, make it a part of your daily routine, example at meal times or when you go for a walk. I know there are a lot of people who, you know, talk to their friends when they're walking um, and just, you know, catch up, see what they're up to. Um, you can do, yeah, that just via the telephone. Um, you can participate in shared activities online, reading. Uh, there's some um, book clubs that you can do or online games or exercising together. 
I love this one, handwritten letters in the mail. Uh, a, a good letter goes down well. And even dropping off a care package or offering to pick up someone's essential items like groceries can also be something um, you could gauge in as well. So there's lots of different ways to stay in touch and there are so many more. It basically just relies on you to stop, think about what's in your control and then use your creativity to come up with something. Reaching out to neighbours um, who you might not have met yet uh, already have relationships with um, can help you and your neighbours to feel less lonely. You can send one of those care packages uh, in the mail, lollies and chocolates. Uh, we've got a lady um, from work, Robin, and she said she came home and um, there was um, some cookies for her on the front step from her neighbours and that, you know, that really brought joy to her at that moment and reminded her of, um, you know, what's really important to us and that's connection. Um, and there's also, I guess, um, delivering meals. There's, um, yeah, if you're, if you're a part of an organisation which does that for people who um, are very isolated and have limited skills in the kitchen. So we just moved to our new house and I've been unable to meet my neighbours and that, you know, I've been here for like, I don't know, three or four weeks or something. And it felt really weird that, you know, I came into their space and all of a sudden, um, you know, I don't know them, they don't know me. And it didn't feel really comfortable to me because I'm obviously all about connection. And so we got together as a family and um, wrote letters to the neighbours about who we are. There's a photo of us, our contact details, a little bit about us, what we do in our activities. And we sent those out to our neighbours. And we've gotten some really, really cute things back in return. Um, we know our neighbours across the road uh, are children and, and they um, make cupcakes for us. And so um, that was really great when I got home and then had to jump straight back onto uh, running another group. And that was the only thing I ate. And it was there. And that's the only reason why I ate because it was there for me. And it was just, it was just really nice because people know that they're not alone, um, that everybody here is looking out for each other. And it just was a way for us to connect. And so now when I see them in the street, we give each other a wave, but it's like, oh yeah, okay, I know who you are. And it definitely makes me feel less like I'm ignoring them. So maybe if you moved recently or there is someone new to your neighbourhood, you could just reach out to them and let them know um, who you are. Staying connected through the post. There, like I was saying before, there's nothing like receiving a letter in the mail. It really does brighten someone's day when you put like a nice, you know, thoughtful, heartfelt message in the post and delivered it to them. Um, you know, opening it up and seeing it in the, in the mailbox, there's just something special about it. Um, you, I mean, if you, if you don't have someone in mind, like a family or friend, you can also, um, you know, send something to a neighbour or uh, you could choose just random, randomly choose an address in your neighbourhood and send them an anonymous encouraging letter. Um, I, I suppose you could Google and find out what that would look like and, and what you could put in, but that could make some boys day as well. And um, be creative for a friend's birthday. Um, this, this here is an actual photo from my living room yesterday. So it's my cousin's 40th birthday and she's trying really hard to forget that it's happening. And so I thought that it would be really loving of me um, to send her 40 birthday cards in the mail. <laughs> so I managed to find in one chemist yesterday, 40 different birthday cards. And I think my favorite is the um, Elsa um from frozen that character from frozen um, and so we've we've written um various messages in there and we're going to send them to her over three days so she's she's going to get a lot of um mail in her letterbox and so that's going to be fun so there, there's many different ways that you can um, be creative funny reach out make light of the situation as well Um, this, I guess, this is about um, thinking about community projects. And during lockdown in 2020, um, there was a bunch of us at the Resilience Centre who ran an initiative called Stay Connected, where the idea is to encourage members of that community to stay connected in various different ways. And um, at the time, like I did a gratitude board, and at the time I was living in an apartment building, and at the entrance um, we had what was called um, the gratitude wall, and it was designed to actually unite the apartment building family as one. Because I mean, I remember 
someone from one apartment saying like I can't see my family because they're, they're not near me and I can't I can't get out but their fam they could have um their their neighbors could be their family and so we kind of got together and built um, a relationship around our apartment family board and it was a place to be able to share gratitude through um this is this was just the start of it and so then it just grew and grew um, and it was full by the end of it. But, you know, we, we shared gratitude through photos. Um, we shared photos of ourselves so that in the end we had our apartment family um, pictures together and we did um, colouring competitions for adults and children and these were the, uh, the prizes, so Mars Bar and Smarties, Smarties were for kids, and just reasons for being grateful and other various types of initiatives on there. Um, we also, in the end, started a Facebook group as well for the apartment. And so it was a place where you could uh, share different um, items in your house that not everybody has. So not everyone owns like a mini grout cleaner or a portable tebanyaki plate. So, but you, you know, we were able to share those things as well. And although um, it doesn't replace, uh, you know, your fam seeing your family and friends and the ones that you love, it does kind of help make the at home experience that little bit better knowing that you're you're sharing it with others and, and connecting the other the other part that i didn't actually realize was that uh, the strata manager for the building uh, would have various buildings that he'd manage and i ran into him later and he just said he just still loved coming to our building because there was a sense of positivity and connection love about it and I did not think and re realize it would have an impact further out from just our group of people so you know com com compassion and love and kindness really does have a ripple effect so there might be some of you who live in an apartment building or have more of a community setting that you might be able to do something like this with so there's a summary of staying connected there are many different ways to stay connected through the post with our neighbours, over digital platforms and telephones. Um, ask you to be creative and use your imagination in different ways and schedule in online catch-ups with family and friends to ensure that they happen. Um, otherwise, we have the best intentions and the next thing you know, it's been the next day we've forgotten. So schedule them in. Uh, they, there might be pressure to keep being productive in this time, but try to remember as well that it's actually a stressful experience and it's taking a lot of your energy. So be, be kind to yourself and to be proud of the things that you are achieving at the moment. Just, just getting through day to day at this point and keeping up with all the changes is quite amazing in itself really. And remembering that this time will pass and so it, it won't be long. So what can wait until then? Do we really have to do everything um, and keep on track of all the things we used to do and, and, and try and manage the here and now, what can you put off until later so that you're having more of a calm experience and able to connect better just by being calm. So any final thoughts um, or comments um, before we finish up and someone pulls the plug? <laughs> While we're waiting, Michelle, for final comments, we just have two lovely comments from before, one relating to um, all the things we do in lockdown when we're trying to pass the time positively. And I thought this was lovely and I'm going to take this one on board. Uh, during the 11 a.m. briefing, we all know what that is, this participant cooks. She says, even if it's only preparing vegetables for the evening, it's something positive while listening to something that is unfortunately often negative. Yesterday it was vegetable soup, today it was cheese scones and some is always for that day and then some goes straight to the freezer. Beautiful. I love it. I love so that it's like, too. Um, it's it's cancelling out a negative with a positive. Yes. Wow. That's next level. Are... I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to be taking that on board too. And another participant has said that she writes weekly postcards, uh, travel spots, great artworks. Oh, this is what she was doing. Apologies, last year to friends who are in Melbourne, writing weekly postcards, talking about travel spots, or thinking about great artworks to help her friends get through the lockdown last year in Melbourne. So something Beautiful. we can all take on board now. That's great. Yeah. Lots of comments coming through. Love seeing people in my suburb leaving their books out for walkers to take. Oh, yeah. oh, like a street library. 
Yes, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. good one. Very, very good one. Yeah. Another one has said, thank you so much. I have really enjoyed realising how I am not making such a bad job of being in lockdown. Good job. Well done. I love it. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Another is keen to get postcards as soon as possible. Uh, just reading through them. Oh, how lovely. Uh, this is about somebody who's just not able to access Zoom, but instead they ring a friend and they watch the same movie together, roughly at the same time, and then they have a chat about it. Like I a love movie that. club. <laughs> I love it. Another says, thanks for reminding me to write up a daily schedule. Another is leave a note for those older neighbours who may need assistance. Yes. And then we have a question for you. What can I do to help cope with the feeling that I'm overwhelmed despite keeping busy with all my crafts during a lockdown? Yeah, that's that's, and that's a really good good reflection because it does happen, and I guess um, we do try and um, keep ourselves busy. Uh, I think the key to that one is first acknowledging your. I'm going to see if I can go back here. Um, is acknowledging your emotion and trying to work out what's underneath there it is this one trying to work out what it is that um, is is worrying or upsetting um, and then um, I think we need to do that first otherwise we don't acknowledge that that's going on and then we can't then work it out and then try and let let the worry go or the the emotion go uh, because otherwise the, the craft activities become um, a form of um, distraction and avoidance. So we, it's okay to do that, but we've got to then work out what on our, is going on first. So maybe it might be worth um, just journaling something down, having like a period of time in the day, just 5, 10, 20 minutes outside of your bedroom where you just sit down and you journal or you write or you worries and you see what's on there. Um, and then from there, um, hopefully you'll be able to come up with seeing if it's a hypothetical situation you can't control and then or is it actually a current problem that you can do something about I hope that helps thank you Michelle another says for everyone who is not tech savvy um, things like knitting squares to make a beautiful blanket nice Another that. is just expressing their gratitude. Thank you. This has been the most helpful, affirming, affirming the activities that we are doing at home, work, and giving us new ideas to mix it up. Love it. Another is asking, this is a question, uh, which may not necessarily be for Michelle, but probably can be helpful to anyone, for those of you who would play a sport that has been now indefinitely cancelled, but still want mm -hmm. to keep fit and still want to keep connected. Uh, it's about accessing another person that they can go running with. Can anybody potentially suggest how they could meet somebody their own age? We will, we will put, we will ask council to put some information together and put an answer together for that one. Somebody else is saying, thank you for all the good ideas. And another is saying, this is a wonderfully positive talk. Oh, I'm really glad. And please, you know, share some of your thoughts with others as well and, and spread that positivity and um, ideas so that, you know, we can, we can all benefit and the loved ones that you have can benefit too. Send them something fun and crazy in the mail. <laughs> I might just stop, stop sharing. Should I do that? Yes. I just wanted to share that there are some questions necessarily that none of us are in the position to answer today just because we want to make sure we're giving you the most correct and the most up-to-date um, uh, information. So in the chat, I'm going to put a link just to the hotline, uh, uh, COVID-19 hotline, but that is specifically for seniors where you can ring up and ask your questions. That's great. That's really, really good. Bear with me while I do that. So not just one of you getting it. <laughs> there we go, coming through now.
Oh, lovely. Somebody has sent through a no need red good for all types. I need that. We'll share yeah. that publicly. Thank you. I like that. <laughs> Coming through. I need now. all the help I can get in the kitchen. <laughs> We're now hearing about Listening Ear. Listening Ear is a voluntary service provided for lonely, isolated people, but it is not a crisis line. I will share that number and website as well. These are all such good ideas. Mm. I often feel like I learn more <laughs> yeah. than I give, which is great. <laughs> so I thank you. Oh, just, uh, I just wanted to say there was a question that came through on Q&A. Uh, to say, is it being recorded for later viewing? It is, but I, it, it'll be available on, I think most of the councils will put it on their website for about a month. So have a look on your local council. So we, uh, in Coringa, we have a Life Online um, page on our website, and that's, that's where most of that information will go. Or we, have also, we also have a Seniors page. So yeah, have a look on those if you want to get a review. Yeah, wonderful ideas. So I think we've seen to be most questions have come through. No other questions or comments. Thank you, everyone. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, thanks so much, Michelle. It was really wonderful. Oh, it's my, always my pleasure. <laughs> yeah. So we, um, yeah, that was, um, it's just a fantastic help for everybody to get that sort of expertise and information and so thoughtful, such thoughtful ideas and also sharing everybody's ideas, which is really good. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone for joining us today. That was, and, and sharing your ideas, it's great. Uh, so our next, we're just a reminder that the next webinar that we're having in this series will be next Tuesday called Coping with Uncertainty. So there are various, all of the councils will have um, a link that you can book, I think, uh, on their websites. So yeah, I hope you can join us for that one. And I think we've, um, if I can just, I just coming. want to clarify, yeah. apologies to interrupt, somebody has asked just to confirm that it is next Tuesday. So yes, everyone ah, in yes. this series, it goes Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, because we yeah. were depending on the availability of the presenters. So next week is Tuesday and then a return to Monday. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I think we've, I think most questions have come through and uh, some more. Oh, just um, Thank you. So, yeah, so thank you, Michelle. Thanks, Belinda, for your help as well. And Madeline for the, for the uh, expertise in the background, <laughs> the tech stuff. So, yeah, all right. Well, we're, um, I think we'll finish up, shall we? Pretty well on time, I think. So we're just getting thank yous coming through on the chat. So anyway, all right. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you, Belinda. Yeah, and we'll, we won't see Michelle, but we'll see Belinda next, next Tuesday and Adeline and another presenter. Okay, all right.